Alright, hello everyone. Um, so I haven't done a live stream in a while, but I thought it would be fun to kind of come on and uh, start doing some more live streams. So that's one of the things that I want to do this year is just start doing um, more live streams. So I'm planning for this one to just be a little bit more chill, like some, um, we're going to try out these paints and just do some fun painting, um, just in case there's any hiccups today. Good morning, Lisa. Nice to see you here. So I'm just going to give a couple of minutes for people to give the notification, um, to get the notification and to come in. So Lisa, if you could let me know if um, everything looks clear here and if you can hear me okay. Um, but for those who are watching the replay, I will go ahead and put a timestamp down below so you can just skip ahead to when I start swatching these out. So these are the Paul Rubens watercolors. It's the 24 set and I've taken all of the wrappers off of them, but I haven't actually swatched them yet. I want it to th this to be like actual first impressions swatching them. And what I did with the wrappers was I, I took them, I cut the top of it and then I glued it to the bottom of these. So if I could ever find, you know, these individually, I could always replace them or at least I'd know what colors are in there crystal clear and uh, sound very good. Perfect. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to take this down so it doesn't move around. I do have all the names and the um, pigment numbers as well. So I will mention those as we get going. And I hope everybody is having a fantastic weekend and a good morning. I'm just using some regular masking tape here for this nothing fancy. I do always like put my tape on me and then I take it off even when I'm doing swatches like this because sometimes masking tape can rip your paper. So I'm just going to tape down the edge here just on either side. Now I've never tried any uh, Paul Rubens watercolors so if anybody has let me know if you like them or not. Okay. So I think I'm just gonna start um, trying them out. So we'll start with this one. So this is the Permanent Lemon Yellow um, and it's PY3. And I haven't gone ahead and sprayed any of these because I just want to see how they're going to re-wet just going from my jar right to the pan. So we'll just see. I might need just a little bit more water on my brush though. And I'm just using the Princeton Neptune size 8 round brush for this. And we'll just get this on. Oh, that's vibrant. That's a really nice, really nice yellow color. Okay, and it re-wet pretty decent, I would say. Good morning everyone um, that's just coming on. I'm just getting started here. So I just swatched out this one, the Permanent Lemon Yellow. Now we're gonna go into the Cadmium Yellow Medium, which is PY35. I never really paid attention to the pigment numbers before, but this year I'm trying to make a habit of doing that um, and just to inform myself a little bit more about pigment numbers. Okay, so that one's really nice as well. Um, and then this one is the Indian Yellow PY83. Now, is anybody painting along with me this morning? Or are you doing any swatches as well? Or maybe you're just enjoying. Oh, I like that one. That one reminds me of like a quinacridone gold. And that might be the pigment number, I'm just not sure. This is the Cadmium Red Light um, PR108. And these are really pre-wetting super nicely. Oh, that is nice. That is really nice. And I've just got a couple of jars of water off to the side here just to rinse my brush out. Make sure it's super clean. 
And then once we get these all swatched, we'll go ahead and do some kind of painting. This is the Scarlet PR123, and I already love this color. That is a really nice bright red color. Almost leans maybe a little cool. And then we have Red Matter here, PR177. And I just got a little drop of water there on my brush. Oh, that one's really nice too. Then we've got Violet here, PV19. I do love a good Violet. Now, once I'm done swatching, I will hold this car card up a little bit closer for you guys to see, but uh, I had it ready so that when I bring some paper over to actually start painting, I wouldn't have to move the camera or anything. So it might feel a little uh, zoomed out right now. Then we've got Permanent Violet PV23. And normally I like getting my watercolors in tubes and I put them in a palette, like I just squeeze them out into a regular palette, not in pans like this. But I'm kind of actually liking this format and I'm thinking of taking some of my favorite colors from tubes that I do have and then making like a custom palette like this. Um, because it's pretty compact and uh, kind of easy to carry around. And then you could swap out colors that you like. So this one's Cobalt Blue PB29. So I may eventually do that. So if you guys want to see a, a video while I'm doing that, or I can just do it, you know, in my spare time sometime. But I kind of want to go and like re-swatch all of the watercolors that I have and make like a swatch book so that I'll have all of the colors, the pigment numbers, if they're staining or not staining, um, information like that. Uh, this is the Ultramarine PB29. So if you guys are interested in me doing that like on a stream or just on a video, let me know. Oh, this is like definitely like a regular ultramarine color. So, so far I don't see any of these granulating, so I'm wondering if this one will granulate. And I am swatching on Arches cold pressed paper here. I just cut out a little card for that. Now, normally ultramarines are known to be a little bit more granulating, so we'll see with that one. Then we've got Sky Blue here, PB36. Oh, this is like a pretty, pretty blue too. A little dulled down. I like that. Now, I hope I'm not missing anybody's chat because I'm not seeing any come through. So if I am, I'm very sorry. I apologize. Um, but I think you guys are just quietly watching, which is totally fine too. This is the C Blue PB15 uh, and PB3. So out of this set, there's only, I think, maybe four or five. Let's see, there's one, uh, two, three, four, five, five colors that have uh, more than one pigment. So most of them are sig single pigments, which is really nice. I thought that was interesting. Oh, this is a really beautiful blue. Reminds me of like a phalo blue. Love that. Okay. I'm just going to refresh my browser just to make sure everything's working okay. Just bear with me for one second there. Perfect, okay. 
Um, so this is the, actually we'll start swatching over here because this is still our blues. So in this palette, um, this row was backwards, but I made it this way because I wanted the blues to continue like this. Um, so I just kind of flipped it. So this is the Prussian Blue PB27. That looks very similar to the Sea Blue. Let's get a little bit more. See if we can't get that any darker. That looks really close to that Sea Blue. So I don't know if that's coming across on the camera for you guys. That is very zoomed out, but I will, I promise, I will bring the swatch card up closer for you guys to see in a minute. Um, and then we've got Payne's Gray here, which is PB15, PB59, and PBK9. So this one has a little bit in it. I do love a good Payne's Gray and neutral tint. Oh, this one's nice and dark. Let's get a little bit more in there. Yeah, I like that. All right, so then we've got, um, we're going into our greens. So this is yellow green, it's PG36 and PY74. Just by the looks of it here, it kind of reminds me of like, something like a leaf green, maybe. Yeah, it's a very nice bright green. I do like that too. And then we've got tree green here, and this is uh, PG36, PY12, PR101, and PW5. So I think this is one of the ones that had the most uh, mixed into it. And it's interesting that it's got PW5, because I'm pretty sure that's a, a pigment white, is it not? So it looks like there is some opacity there, but not not a huge amount, so that's kind of interesting for them to put that in that color. Now, sometimes when you see greens like this, um, like this yellow green here, it's a little bright uh, and you don't often wanna use that straight out of the palette. I just add a little bit of red to it and that just kind of mutes it down, makes it a little bit more usable. Um, and this one here is Hooker's Green, which is just PG17. Well, that is very dark. Oh, I like this one. This one reminds me a lot of my Daniel Smith um, Deep Sap Green, and I love that color. That's one of my favorites. And then we've got Emerald Green here, which is PG7. It almost looks a little on the blue side. Yeah, oh, that, that looks like almost a nice Viridian type blue. I love that as well. Oh, good morning, Thea. Nice to see you here. How are you this morning? Are you painting along or just watching? Then we're getting on to some of our browns here. We've got yellow ochre, which is PY42. It's nice to see um, some of you guys showing up again because uh, like I was saying at the beginning of the stream, I haven't streamed <laughs> for a while. So you never know if you're just gonna be streaming to yourself. That is, uh, it almost seems a little bit more opaque than regular yellow ochres, but I could have just done a very opaque swatch as well. They do, they do look very potent um like i'm not even i'm just doing a little bit in the pan and they're coming off very pigmented so the payoff is great um stephanie i think i'll call you stephanie <laughs> thea just watching having to get ready for church soon oh, okay well thank you for stopping by in the meantime yes they are very bright so this is red ochre pr 101 but I do like some bright colors and you can always like add other colors into them to mute them down. But I'd rather have a bright color to start off with because it's 
really hard to near impossible to mix a bright color when you don't have them. So I'd rather start with them. So then we've got Umber here. This is PR101 and PBR7. That does not look like an Umber to me. Let me just dig in there a little bit, see if I can't get it a little bit darker. This almost looks like what a burnt sienna would kind of look like, uh, maybe a little bit more on the orangey tone. Well, that's not bad. It, it looks almost a little rusty. I kind of like that, though. And then, okay, and then this one is burned, burned sienna. Burned with an ED, and this is PB7. Uh, no greenish cast. Yeah, no greenish cast. Now this, this does not look like a burnt sienna to me, or burned, um, but I do like the color, because you do want to have some darker browns or some darker pigments to be able to mix in your palette too. So I do like that. But I feel like those two last colors could have been swapped. <laughs> Actually, maybe I'll have to double check afterwards, but I'm pretty sure they're in the right spot. And then this one is Burned Brown PBR7. Oh, this is really nice and dark. So this is a little bit of a cooler brown here. Just slightly. Okay. And then our last one here is Coal Black. And this is just PBK7. Now I don't usually tend to leave a black in my palette. I will tend to use either Payne's Gray. Ooh, that is a nice, uh, nice dark black though. I'll tend to use like um, Payne's Gray or Neutral Tint, or I'll mix a black with like uh, Ultramarine and, and Burnt Sienna, or Phthalo Blue and Burnt Sienna, or something like that, or Indigo um, and Burnt Sienna would make a nice one. Okay, you know what? I just want to check here to see. Can I get this one out? This should be the umber one. And yes, it is. Okay, so I do have them in the right order then. So I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off here and I'll just bring it a little closer for you guys to see. And then we'll get into some kind of painting with these colors. But let me know what your favorite colors are so far. So let's see if I can't get it without um, putting my hands in it. So I hope you guys can see that there. I do have a little bit of leg, <laughs> but that's what those colors look like super pretty. So you can always like um, screenshot it or come back and just look, but I love uh, these colors already. And the ultramarine is drying pretty flat. So that's nice as well. Um, because I do like, I sometimes I go through a phase where I want more granulating colors, and then sometimes I go for through a phase where I want like nice flat colors, and these ones all seem to be nice and flat, not granulating. So I guess it just depends um, what you're in the mood for. <laughs> now for painting today, I've been watching, I just recently discovered, um, oh, what is her name? Sketches and Scrubs. And I've been watching her live streams and she does these beautiful floral paintings. Um, this was just something quick on like cheap paper that I was uh, playing around with, but I've been really inspired to try um, doing some floral paintings like that. So I thought that's what we would do today. Just something very laid back and just playing around with some paint and seeing how they blend. Um, and I also have the this new Paul Rubens, it's like sparkly paper or whatever it came um, in this. And I kind of want to try this paper. Let me get it out and show you. It is super sparkly. Your favorite is the Black Mix um, PBK 31 PR 122. Okay. Oh, you love sketches and scrubs? Yes. I don't know how I haven't seen her before. But I recently um, found her, and then I've been watching all of her live streams back, and I absolutely 
love the way she does her um, floral paintings and so that's kind of inspired me to step out of my comfort zone and uh, try some today so I don't know if you guys can see the the sparkles on this paper here I don't know if it's gonna do it do it justice or not I might have to get really close um, and the back is sparkly too, so I'm wondering if you could use both sides. But I thought maybe since Valentine's Day was coming up, um, it might be nice to do some kind of a Valentine's florals. So I don't know if I'm going to tape the whole paper down. Maybe I'll reuse this tape if I can and just tape like a couple of corners here. Um, so I kind of want to do some kind of floral thing, and maybe we'll start with something a little easier like some roses and I think I want to do like a heart and then do some roses in it and then maybe have like the leaves kind of trying to form the heart I don't know we'll see we'll see how that turns out but to make my life easier I'm just going to try sketching a heart out first and then um then I can paint in it and then I can go ahead and erase the heart afterwards so when I'm trying to sketch things it's I like to have sort of an idea of where I want things to end so I think maybe it'll be a little bit of a wider heart here. Um, I saw a tiny flash of sparkle. <laughs> I'll have to take a picture and maybe I'll post it on my uh, community tab, but like this paper is super sparkly. When I first took it out and looked at it, I was like, oh wow, that is sparkly. So maybe it'll be here and how wide do we want our flower maybe, or our flower, our heart, something like that, something like that. And then we'll just start, I hope I'm centered. Um, <laughs> actually, this could probably go up a little bit more like that. And then let's see, we'll put a little spot here. So this is not going to be a perfect heart or anything. Actually, that is super not a perfect heart. I'm just gonna fix this edge here maybe if I can. It's so hard trying to make stuff um, like the same on either side. You know what? That's good enough because we'll just throw some flowers and stuff in there and try to make it good. <laughs> um, so I'll leave my sketch lines dark enough so you guys can see there. And yeah, so I think I'm going to start with some roses and then maybe afterwards, once we finish this one, depending on the time, we can always try some other flowers. Um, I'm up for that if you guys want to see that. So what color should I use for some of the roses here? I think I might do a few different colors. Um, I really like I really like that scarlet color. So let's try uh, this one first. We'll start with this one. So this is a really nice, like pinky red. It's almost just slightly pinky. Just getting some water here to get it watered down. Now I am by no means um, any good at doing florals. It's just something, you know what, I might switch uh, my brush actually um, because I like my uh, silver black velvet brushes and it's got a little bit of a better point to it. So I'm wondering if maybe this will help me a little bit more, um, but I am by no means any good at doing florals. I'm just really inspired <laughs> by sketches and uh, scrubs. So. That's, that's what I'm going to attempt today. And then if you guys enjoy this, we can always do more streams, doing more florals. But I'm thinking I'll kind of um, do the florals in this area and then we'll do some leaves afterwards. Uh, so maybe I'll start one here and I'm just going to start like doing little C's and then just doing some lines around it and just starting to get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and then I might get a little bit of the water off. Now I've not tried this paper before either, so we'll just see how this goes. And 
and I might even grab a little bit more of this and just drop some in just in a few of the inner spots. We'll see if this paper will stay wet enough to kind of do that. Okay. So the paint doesn't spread a whole lot or it doesn't seem to, but that's okay. All right, so let's grab another color here. Um, let's do, let's do that Indian yellow. I really liked that color too. All right. And maybe I'll do it, uh, maybe I'll do it kind of facing like this way. So if I want to do that, I'll kind of do some more little curves here. And then I'm just going to do a few bigger ones kind of starting on this side. And I'm going to let them touch and just see if they end up bleeding a little bit. Okay. And then we'll grab a little bit more. And again, just drop that in. And I may even come back once it's um, completely dry and just see if we can't maybe add a little bit more for a little bit more dimension. But this is just an experiment. <laughs> I don't know why I like to do things that I've never done on stream and think they're gonna go perfect. Is anybody else <laughs> like that? Um, okay, let's try another color. Let's try this uh, cadmium red light color. Kind of put this here, I like that. That's a nice orangey color too. And then maybe we'll do a purple flower too. Or they're just gonna be all different colors of flowers. <laughs> Um, so maybe we'll do this one kind of over here. So I'm going to kind of try to do the same thing where it looks like hopefully maybe that rose is facing that way. Um, so again, just some little, little lines, little curves. And then I'm just dipping my brush in water there just to try to help um, maybe it look like it's darker in the center and then lighter as it goes out. Expecting the unexpected when trying something new. Yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm like, oh, this is gonna go perfect. There's gonna be no issues with that. Oh, I, I've never done <laughs> florals like this before, but totally fine, totally fine. But you know what, one of my goals for this year is kind of trying to step out of my comfort zone, do things I don't usually do, you know, try to grow as an artist, um, just put stuff out there. And if it sticks, it sticks. If not, well, hopefully I've learned something from it. So I'm just grabbing a little bit more of that cadmium. I really love this color for um, flowers, florals. This is already looking really pretty. Okay, I kind of like that. I think I'm gonna go back in and add a little bit more color to some of them because they are looking a little flat. So let's grab the uh, purple. Let's do the PV19 one, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Some of these like dark colors in here kind of almost all look the same. This one's a little bit more of like a warm purple. Um, so let's do this one. Maybe we'll do it right here and it'll kind of hopefully be facing upwards a little bit. So in my mind, 
I'm trying to do like the little circly part closer to the edge here and have more petals in the back depending on what way I want it to face. I don't know if it's coming across like that for you guys, but um, that's how I'm trying to do it. So maybe this one's a little bit smaller just to fill in uh, this space here. And again, just rinsing. So I just dip the tip of my brush in and then I just run it against the side of the brush, uh, the jar. And that's usually enough to start getting some water off of it. And then I kind of just do like little lines to kind of fill in that space there. And then we'll grab a little bit more and drop it in. This is actually kind of really relaxing. Does anybody else uh, paint florals here? I never thought I would enjoy it, but it's actually kind of really relaxing just to put the paint down and kind of let it do its own thing. Okay, so I might try doing maybe another little tiny rose here and rose here. So if you guys have suggestions for um, colors that you want to see, I don't know if you can see the swatches. Let me pull them down a little bit more. Um, why don't we do, let's do a blue one. So maybe we'll do that. Um, kind of like that sky blue. It's a little bit more muted of a blue. So I'll grab that and I'll put that over here. That might make an interesting rose color. Okay, so again I'm going to try to have it facing this way. Try is the keyword here. <laughs> Maybe afterwards we could always try doing some peonies. Um, those are like super pretty, but I'm not uh, not very good at doing those ones either. <laughs> and then I'll just grab a little bit more of that uh, sky blue there. Just kind of drop that in. That one's almost giving me uh, peony vibes. <laughs> so maybe that's what that is. Okay. And then we'll do another one over on this little side here. Let's see. Um, let's do the, the permanent violet, which is a little bit darker purple. Need a little bit more water on my brush. That's really pretty too. Okay, and uh, again we'll face it kind of this way. We'll see if it ends up looking like a rose or something else. And then I'm just going to rinse that a little bit. That is a very uh, dark color. Okay. So I like that and I don't know if I want to leave this space for leaves or if I want to end up putting something else there. I might do, um, hmm. Not sure. So, do you guys have any suggestions for what should go here? I feel like I should put another uh, flower or something there. 
or maybe we'll do a couple of buds, um, like little rose buds or flower buds kind of uh, coming out. We could have a couple of those and then fill up with some of the foliage. So maybe I'll do a little red um, bud since we've got some of that here already. And I'm just dabbing that off on the side if it's too much. And uh, so maybe I'll have it kind of coming here, so. I'm kind of picturing something like that, just a little bud. And then it's got way too much water on there, so I'm just gonna suck that up. Leaves and buds, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And then maybe we can drop in a little bit uh, of that tree green in there or something. Let's try that, just drop that in and just see how that does. Not sure I love that mix, but. And then we'll kind of connect that afterwards, um, maybe. I'll just connect it now. There we go. And then we'll do a couple more. So maybe we'll have one uh, coming out here. And let's do, um, let's do that CAD red light one. I do like this color too. Let's have it maybe coming out here. Oh, I want it a little darker than that though. Okay, and then let's try a different green. Um, Let's try this emerald green. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so we'll give that one a try there. And then maybe I'll just do like one more coming out here, I'll see. Uh, Let's do one, no, we already did that red. Let's do a, a purple one. So maybe we'll do the purple violet color here. Maybe I'll do, um, I want to see how the tree green does with that one. So we'll grab that, just that regular uh, green mix there. And sometimes I do like uh, to let my colors like kind of mix together and just see what they'll do because sometimes you get some unexpected mixes. I feel like we do need another yellow over on this side, so I might take, um, what did we use? I think we used that Indian yellow. I'll do another bud there, and then we'll go in and start doing some leaves, and then we can always come back and darken anything up. So maybe this one will kind of be like this. Oh, that one kind of came out really nice. <laughs> I kind of like that one. All right, and then let's do the light um, green with that one. So this was the yellow green. And I'm just barely gonna touch that one there. Okay. 
Okay, I like how that one turned out. That one was alright. Okay, so let's go in and do some leaves. Um, and I really like that that hooker's green and the emerald green. Is If there's any specific greens that you guys want to see me use, please let me know. Um, but I might do a few um, with the emerald green here. So let's see this one here. I think that was that color. Oh, nope, but that's okay. I mixed it with whatever color was there. That might've been the emerald green. Um, just grabbing a little bit more water because I don't want it to be super, super dark. I want the flowers to still be the, the stars of the show, I hope. Um, but I think I'm gonna do like a couple of bigger leaves and then I'll have like some small ones coming out like bunches of leaves, uh, we'll see. We'll see how that works because I like how on this one here I did a few like bigger leaves I I don't know if those look good or not but I kind of like how they turned out so that's what I'm picturing in my mind here um, so we'll have one kind of come out here And then I'm just going to fill it in. And maybe I'll do uh, this color over here too, just to kind of fill uh, some space in. Might even grab just a little bit more, make this one just a little bit darker over here. And then I might just drop a little bit in here. We've got some white spaces just to show there's like leaves and stuff behind them too. We'll see how that looks. And then I'm gonna grab that uh, hooker's green color. And then I'll do another one here. So far this paper is doing pretty good, not uh, buckling or anything. It has like lifted just a little bit, but not bad really. Okay. And then let's go, um, let's do a few like little yellow green leaves, like just some little ones here and there. So Maybe I'll have some kind of coming out here. And I'm just pushing the tip of my brush down and then I'm lifting it. Um, thanks for the live stream, gotta go now, but I really enjoyed listening and watching. Thank you so much for joining, Thea. I really enjoyed it. Um, I am planning to maybe start doing more live streams. Maybe not weekly, I used to do them weekly, so I'm thinking maybe every two weeks. Um, so if you guys have ideas, or if you just want them to be nice, chill uh, painting live streams like this, please let me know in the comments below. Um, yeah, but thank you so much for joining. Maybe we'll do another light one. This is like a really bright green. Okay, and 
and then we will switch it up and uh, let's do let's do some of that tree green I do like that one And we'll do a few uh, longer ones here. So maybe we'll have one that kind of curves, curves out this way just to start um, getting that heart shape in. Oops. I don't know what kind of leaf <laughs> these are supposed to be, but they're kind of just filling up some space, I guess. All right, and let's do uh, maybe another one kind of coming over here. See if I can't do a better job this time. dagger brush too that I might uh, end up trying because um, I feel like maybe that would give some different leaves so maybe I'll try that after too okay and then I feel like I just want to get a few um, like smaller ones in here and then we'll Try a different color. I feel like I definitely need to work on my leaves. <laughs> but that's okay. This is all just fun. Okay, so I want to get uh, some of that emerald green in maybe, or even the hooker's green. Maybe I'll do a few of the emerald green and then, uh, then some of the hooker's green because I really like this green too. It's all coming together very nicely. Looks really good. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. I hope so. I hope once we get some in there and then maybe I'll go back and try to like do a little bit more detail in some of these flowers it'll fix the mistakes <laughs> kind of so let's see let's do um a longer one here maybe starting to curve I want these to have a little bit more of a point to them, I think. I really like this color though. I really like this palette. I feel like this is a very well made palette. Like you've pretty much got all of the colors that you need in there. 
Um, you know, you've got some nice darks, you can mix a lot of colors from this. So I feel like when they were designing this, it was pretty well done. And then let's just do a few just some leaves on their own um, okay and I did want to try that hookers green before we get um, two in there. So I think that's uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this one. It's a really nice dark green. So we'll get some of this in before. Uh, where do I want to put this? You know, let's just go over top of this one. So now I'm just trying to like, see if I can fill up some of the remaining space by just doing little random leaves. Let's have one kind of coming. And I feel like I want just a few more of the emerald green. So let's grab that. And we'll just put a few more little tiny fillers in. I feel like I want it a little darker than that though. Okay, I feel like that's doing pretty good there. I don't think I really want to add too much more to the leaves. How's it looking for you guys? Do you feel like I need to fill in anywhere else? Um, maybe I'll grab this tree green color here and just add one little like leaf 
up here kind of like coming just to fill in there maybe we've got a little wonky leaf there that's kind of leaning over I don't know okay I'm gonna go in and try to see if I can add a little bit more color to some of these roses here just to make them pop a little bit so I'm just doing like the inside towards the inside of the petals I'm just going to rinse that off and see if I can kind of soften them out a little bit. And I'm starting at the outer edges because that's where I want it to be uh, the softest, the softest if I can. And then I don't mind the inner part being a little bit darker. So I don't know if that's coming across. But this paper is not handling it too bad, I have to say. So that's pretty good. I wasn't sure if this would just be awful paper and this would just cause blooms and all that but I'm pretty impressed so far so let's grab that Indian yellow color and I'm gonna try doing that with this rose I want it a little bit more concentrated And I'm trying to like help divide up some of these petals while I'm doing that too, if they got a little too all over the place. I feel like it would look pretty if I added a bit of that like orange or pink over this as well. I'm gonna grab that uh, that cadmium red light that we were using and we'll do the same thing on this one yeah I feel like maybe I need to go over with a little bit more orangey color on that one it's not really popping as much so maybe I'll try that afterwards I think the yellow is just not bright enough to kind of get the look that I'm going for. And I'm still trying to keep some of the, the white spaces in here. Okay. 
So maybe for this purple one, let's try doing the darker purple, the uh, permanent violet, and just see how that looks over top of that. Oh, that might be a little dark, but this is all experimentation. If you don't try, you'll never know. I'm not sure I'm absolutely loving that combination. Might grab a little bit of that violet and just drop some of that in. That is a little too much. Yeah, that might have made that one a little a little too dark, but you never know until you try. Um, so let's grab that violet color again, and we'll do this one down here. So I'm just trying to, especially where some of these flowers got a little like blobby, just trying to break it up. And then I think we used the sky blue for this one. I'm just picking up a good amount of that because it is a pretty light color. So I'm trying to be as strategic as I can with placing this, but I think it adds a little something to them. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you, did you like them before I started adding the darker uh, colors or did you like them better now? Ooh, this color I believe is a staining color. Maybe, because it's just giving me a little bit of a harder time uh, moving it around. So I feel like I still want to darken this one up a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of that. Um, so this was the Cad Red Light, and this is our Indian Yellow. I'm just going to mix them together and kind of make a light orangey color. And just see if... I can't uh, get it to pop just a little bit more. I like them as they are now. They look like they have some more depth. Yeah, that's what I was going for because they were kind of looking a little, a little flat. And I think maybe if I was using a uh, better paper, maybe I would have been able to like have more time to draw um, more color in.
but that's okay. I really wanted to try this uh, paper out. And I thought, you know, doing a Valentine's heart with roses and having it be sparkly, why not? Okay. So I think I, I kind of like that. I don't know if I need to add anything more to it or if it's done. What do you guys think? We used a lot of the colors here. So we used the Indian yellow, the Cad Light yellow, uh, a little bit of the Scarlet, that was this one. The Violet, the Permanent Violet, the Sky Blue, Yellow Green, the Tree Green, the Hooker's Green, Emerald Green, um, and I think that was it. So those tend to be a lot of the colors that I gravitate towards. Yeah. So I don't know, let me um, take the tape off and I'll bring it a little bit closer um, to you guys so you can see it. So that's what it looks like there. I don't know if you guys can see any of the sparkles. I'm trying to get them in there, but I don't know if it shows. <laughs> but I think that's kind of cute. I think that's a cute concept. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments below if you guys like seeing like more floral stuff like this. I want to get better at it. Obviously, this is not the best, um, but it is something that I want to get better at. So I can do more live streams like this, or we can just do other stuff. But uh, we've been going for about an hour so far now, so maybe we'll call this one quits. I did want to try practicing some uh, peonies, but yeah, maybe we'll save that for the next one. We can always tr try some peonies, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you guys have any last minute comments or questions for me. Um, if not on the replay, I will put a video up here so you can either check out um, other live streams that I've done. I'll go ahead and put a watercolor live stream up here. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will try to do these every couple of weeks. So stay tuned um, in another couple of weeks, we'll do another one. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining. It was so much fun and I'll see you guys in the next video. Sorry if I'm moving the camera.